can answer the question, Judge. You can't handle the truth! I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Welcome to After Hours AM, The Criminal Cold, with your hosts, Joel Sturgis, Eric Olson, and Dr. Clarissa Cole. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to this edition of After Hours AM, The Criminal Code. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me, Eric Olson, and... Dr. Clarissa Cole. And Dr. Cole is burning for you. Yeah, practically. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, anybody who hasn't heard, I, I can't imagine there wouldn't be anybody that hasn't heard at this point, but the, uh, the, the it's called the campfire. It started on Camp and Palaga Roads up here, which is why it's called that. Uh, the campfire started about a week ago and has yeah. burned 130,000 acres, 7,000 homes, 40, no, 50 confirmed dead and hundreds more missing. How? And how, if you're looking for anybody, by the way, I just wanted to let people yeah. know that the official list of the missing is now up on uh, websites uh, like CBS, ABC. That's scary. Uh, That's scary. It's, and and how did that California fire even start? Did they say how? What was the ignition? Uh, they're, yeah, they're still, they're still doing a, a quote-unquote investigation, but do we know how it started? Yes. Uh, it started the same way that some of the other really horrific, deadly fires started out here. Uh, our power company, PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric, they don't keep up. I'm, good, I'm just going to say, I don't care if they do sue me. They don't keep up their lines well. They don't. Mm. They, they are a huge conglomerate. They're a monopoly out here on the West Coast. Nobody else can compete with them. Huge billion-dollar corporation, and they do not up, keep their lines up. So in these uh, mountainous areas like Paradise uh, was, uh, they had some really you know bad lines that were in ill repair that, Ill repair that customers were actually calling about days before the incident occurred. So – what kind of penalty does a company like that face? I mean, there's loss of life. There's you would you would think that this kind of loss would bankrupt them as a company. Yeah, they're saying that it's going to bankrupt them. But even even with penalties, they're only looking at several billion, and they're worth at least forty billion. At last check, they could they could do it, and I want them to do it. I don't want them to go bankrupt. I am tired of this. You know, yeah. last year the Atlas fire was caused by them. The Tubbs fire may have been caused by them. Hundreds of lives lost. You know, customer customer safety is our first priority, right? Yeah, Prove it. yeah. It never has been. And besides, with the fires last year or 2017 fires, they just jacked up uh, people's rates to pay for those lawsuits. So, <laughs> welcome to PG&E. Uh, it's, Insult it's a, to injury, raise the oh, yeah, rates to I cover for the PG&E. dead. Yeah, wow. that's no. That's no secret, but uh, you know, the the I was uh, what I was telling Joel uh, off air really quickly is that when I was looking to buy a house out here, you know, Henry and I were looking around, and um, I actually looked in Paradise Magalia. That's the two towns that are up there, and I ended up getting one in a in a in a different town a, a little ways away. And um, I, God, I just can't. Only ten percent of the structures in Paradise are left standing. That is just wow. You know, it's gone. why does it seem like California is such a such a tinderbox? I mean, always every year it's burning up. Uh, well, climate change. Honestly, it is climate change. I, I I know that the president likes to to burn to to you know blame talk about the yeah. forest service and and say that he's going to withhold federal aid, which is such a mature thing to do, especially when people are dying. Um, but. No, it's, I mean, Forest Service, maybe, but it's really because of the climate change. We're, we're supposed to be in the middle of our rainy season right now. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where is it? You know, yeah. we, we never had these fire problems in the north before. Now, southern was kind of a different story. That's more desert. It always has been. Sure. Yeah, it's semi-arid, and you have yeah. the Santa Ana winds blowing hot and dry. Mm-hmm. Through a lot of grassy areas. You know, Eric, you, you're more familiar with that area, I think, that, than I am, but northern 
Northern California is not like that. It's very hilly, very mountainous, lots and lots of water. All the water for the entire state of California, in fact, is is up here. Um, so it's not a water problem. It's the fact that we are not getting rain. Mm. So everybody yes, that's it's listening. pine forests. Yeah, mm-hmm. everyone that's listening, pray for rain. Just mm-hmm. intentionally just pray, pray, pray for rain. Let's see if we can't get some rain started for California. They need it. Yeah, it's it was it was a really rough weekend for me. I'm I'm about uh, knock on wood. I'm about uh, 20 miles from where the fire is, and the smoke is so bad outside that you're not supposed to go outside without wearing a breathing mask, rated N95 or above. So no, that's not just a regular paper type mask. Do not wear those. It's not enough. There's mm-hmm. particulate in the air. It's dangerous for any living thing, including animals. Um, and I went out to get like uh, air filters, mm-hmm. you know, for the air purifiers. Yeah, the HEPA to, filters. Right. Yeah, yeah, help that. Every store in town, I found two. They were all sold out, and and there were huge crowds of people, you know, in certain places, not the hardware stores, but like the you know Walmart type stores, yeah. Target, places like. And I'm like, why are there so many people? Like, I I just wasn't getting it. And then I realized that they were people that had come down from those communities and they were looking to buy like the underwear and sock sections yeah. of those stores were yeah. sold out. They need clothes. They just need basic That stuff. is they so incredibly sad. These poor people and they're refugees is really what they are. Yeah. Natural disaster refugees. They are. They're, they're refugees coming down from, from that area. And Paradise was not a huge town, but it wasn't super small either. I mean, 30, 40,000 people. Well, that's a lot. Uh, you, you, get, you have an extra thirty or 40,000 people influx into your city, and you're not ready for it. That's a real burden on the infrastructure. Oh, God. I mean, the store, the, I felt bad for like the store managers and the, the people working the counters. They were calling people from at home like please come in we need more checkers we need more merchandise like going in the back dragging out boxes and i saw i've seen cars drive by with the paint blistered i bet you that's feet, how, oh, how close their cars were to i was, gonna, fire. I was gonna say i bet you fema is all over it right they're everywhere fema they're all helping what? everybody fema no no they're supposed to be right there aren't they i mean that's their job what there no there isn't no in fact donald trump didn't um release federal money for the helicopters that drop water until the day after paradise burned so you know thanks oh. for that oh yeah day late and a dollar he, short he tweet, he, yeah he tweeted about it that he was such a magnanimous president well first he threatened that he would never give another dollar to california again unless we got our forest management together and then he got the news that hey Lots of people died last night, and then he released the funds, even though Cal- the state of California had requested them 24 hours earlier, and it could have helped. We didn't get the water carriers until 24 hours after. Dang. The, the fire is only 30% contained at this point. Wow. 30%. And depending upon which way the wind blows, I mean, unfortunately, Cl- Clarissa, you could actually be in the crosshairs. Uh, it, it's coming this way, actually. Yeah, there, there's one town before me. Uh, before my town, and um, so we're we're on notice. Like I said, we've got the can't go outside without respirators. We're, everybody's supposed to be filtering their air. Um, you know, the water is not safe. Nothing is safe at this point. And then you've got the president tweeting about how you know forest management is terrible. Like, are you kidding me? People died. I have an entire town full of ref, you know refugees, like you said, Joel, that are here. Yeah. To buy well, a question. Underwear, just, water. A question just hit me. Uh, on Facebook. What did they do at prisons when a wildfire like this happens? Should a should it hit a federal prison or a state prison? What do they do to the prisoners? Do they let them die or do they evacuate the prison? Oh, and if no. so, what's <laughs> no. the protocol? You know, that's a great question. We have not really had one that has been directly in the path yet. I mean, knock on wood, we haven't had one. We've, uh, we do have, you know, plans in place. I know that just because I know they always have logistical plans for like, you know, hostage crises and all this other stuff. They would be moved. My guess is that they would he- have huge caravans of buses moving them to out of state private prisons because we don't have the room here mm-hmm. in California. They would have to move them out of state. I mean, that that's the only the, the things I worry about more. I know the prisoners would get out. Our infrastructure is pretty good for yeah. that, to be honest. What I'm more worried about are things like private nursing homes and stuff. They've had a lot of trouble. Oh, sure. Sure. Now that you mentioned it, nursing homes and stuff like that. Yeah. You're, well, you're hospitals. Like, yeah. Because, yeah. They're not because they're not mobile. Like you think about people that need to be on machines, you know, like 24 seven. What do they do? Yeah, you know, it's hard. It's hard to get the like the battery well, packs for things like that. Think, look what happened in Puerto Rico. 
God. And, it, yeah. and I mean, it was like that with the last fire. And actually, the community of Paradise had a lot of elderly residents. It was more of a retirement community, um, which I love, by the way. I just do. I'm not like one of these party all the time people. So I was I was all about that. But a lot of them did have ailments and they couldn't couldn't really get out quickly. And some of the videos that I have seen are some of the worst things I have ever, ever seen. I mean, with, with people's ability to do Facebook Live now, mm-hmm. some of the people that posted videos we now know did not get out. They, they weren't posted after the fact. They were posted during. And, and the vast majority of the, the deceased are in cars that are lined up on the road and they couldn't get out. You know, you're explaining to me before we went on air that Paradise only has one road in and one it road does out. From, so. Yeah, there are, there are roads like kind of from the north, like around the sides of the mountain, but that's the direction the fire was coming from. Mm-hmm. So to the south, there's only one major thoroughfare, one highway into Paradise and Magalia. And it's a mountain community. Like if that road is is blocked, you, there's nowhere to go. That there's is, no way to get out. Again, everybody, pray for rain. Pray for yes. soaking, horrible, deluge rain <laughs> just to get this fire out. But then stop. We don't want mm-hmm. mudslides. But just mm-hmm. enough to get this thing under control. And also pray that the winds calm down so it stops moving that fire so quickly. So, again, pray. And, of course, you can keep up to date with Clarissa over there on Facebook and over at the criminalcode.com. But Clarissa is an avid Facebooker, so if you would like to any updates from Clarissa, her safety, I know people are already asking, gosh, she's got to get back to Wisconsin, get back to Madison, <laughs> and, and we're safe, but that's where you live and that's where you work. So uh, you'll keep everyone posted, mainly via Facebook, right, Clarissa? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I mean, I'm one of these people that is either going to bail real early. <laughs> I would too. You know what I'm, I mean? Probably I'm, yeah, I'm going to bail real early or like in the case when the Oroville Dam was kind of threatened, we thought like maybe there was a deluge coming like when we saw the cars on the road. So there's no way, like they're not going anywhere. You know, it's no. just gridlock traffic. We're going to wait until the traffic dies down and then go. But in case of a fire, you've got to go right away. So Go, know, go now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been kind of a scary week, but other than that, things are things are all right. Wow. Well, Clarissa, hopefully you're safe. Eric, man, that you lived out that way as well. So do you remember being kind of that way even when you were a kid there growing up? Uh yeah, but to a much lesser extent. I mean, my brother lives in Lake Elsinore, and that's just south of LA. And oh. uh it was just the last round of fires. It was just a month or two ago. His house it was blocks from being burned to the ground, toasted. He just absolutely lucked out. Uh, heroic effort. Uh, you were talking about the, you know, the water dumpers, and they they even had the uh, the planes, you know, coming through, and all kinds of people, you know, putting themselves in peril. Uh, basically, you know, saved their town, but all around the town, that started in a camp as well. Um, that literally in a camp. And that was arson. That one was. So, I mean, it's it's terrible. And uh, it's certainly very relevant and brave of you that we are addressing huh, arson this evening. And, uh, I mean, you know, wow. Uh, it, it's amazing stuff. No, it is picked up. I am from the um, – right on the border between San Pedro and Palos Verdes. And – uh, it is certainly, you know, semi-desert, as is all of Southern California. It's right near the ocean. Um, maybe it's a little bit damper due to the sea breezes. But uh, I cannot recall a fire that came to us. Usually it's more in the foothills and and the, the slightly more rural, you know, semi-rural areas that are overgrown. Because it's desert, you get all kinds of desert-like brush you get tumbleweeds you get all of that stuff mm-hmm. and what happens is is when when it's the rain when the rains come then they grow and they grow like crazy then the rest of the time everything gets dried out so you just have all of this kindling this tinder you know just sitting right there so that's bad you know it happens up in malibu happens in the hollywood hills uh where i was um not so much. I'm sure they've had fires in in the more open areas of Palos Verdes, but 
when I lived there, that was not the case. But it just, uh, as Clarissa said earlier, I mean, there's just, by now, there's just kind of no way around it. Mm-hmm. We are seeing more of this thing due to climate change. Yeah. And negligence in the power company. Let's not forget that. Oh, totally. I mean, it's to, to know that, you know, at least three now extraordinarily deadly fires have, have been caused by the same power company. I'm surprised they are still in business. Yeah, big um, business rules all. Greed drives everything. Yeah. It, yes, it, it does. It does. And, and, you know, and, and by the way, if somebody says, oh, they, it's a big, big country out there and it's too much to deal with. Well, I was out of power up in the Reading area for almost two weeks because of one down power line in the Shasta region because of, oh, God forbid, like two inches of snow. Two weeks I had no power. <laughs> In Wisconsin, where it was 80 below windchill, they had that yeah. thing fixed in about four hours. Oh, yeah. So don't yeah, tell don't me. Yeah. Midwest. <laughs> don't tell me that it's just done, okay? Nothing <laughs> stops them in the Midwest, man. No. It, it, it's back up and running in hours, sometimes right, minutes. Because people die. People that's, die that's, without heat. Yeah, yeah. In fact, right now I'm looking at outside at a snowy weather, and we are having January weather right now in November. And yes, yeah, certain death outside your door if that heater goes off. It's no longer working. Anyhow, it is time for dun 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 dun. dun is the true crime headlines brought to you by thecriminalcode.com. It's a one-stop shop for all things true crime, including reading and getting to interact with well, yours not yours truly, but Yours truly, as in Dr. Clarissa Cole. Again, that's the criminal code.com. All right. I've got some weird stories this week. I, you know, I was looking for some patently funny stories, as I do, right? But there are some stories I wanted to touch on just because I'm kind of having a like, what the heck sort of, sort of moment with a couple of them. Like, did you guys see that high school picture from Baraboo, Wisconsin? No, I, I did not yes, see the Baraboo. One is okay, oh, grim. yep. Zikai, Zikai. You mean the, uh, the Nazi Hitler salute? Yeah, like, what is going on? Okay, like, okay, first of all, I'm from Wisconsin, and this is honestly one of the first times, despite all the serial killers we've had, it's one of the first times that I'm embarrassed. Despite the serial We're fine with serial killers. Yeah, we're all right with that. They're overachievers and all. Like, no, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed because of this stupid high school. I'm embarrassed for one of the first times in my life to be from Wisconsin. It's in case all of you didn't see this viral, I guess, photo. It's a it's a prom, a pre prom photo that I guess they do in Baraboo. Like before prom, they all get together in a big group and somebody takes a picture. Sure. And so it's all these guys in suits, which, OK, first of all, this confuses me. If it's a pre prom photo, why are they all guys? Like, where are the women? Do True. they not have dates? They're all taking this. their own picture. It's the um, group, it's the group shot. Yeah, but why wouldn't they be with their dad? I'm still confused. Like, well, why, they, why, well, why would you separate the anyway? They would also have why taken they, a picture with their dates. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so they were doing the boys' photo, or I guess, because yeah. apparently the girls were not doing this. So they take it's probably fifty or sixty kids, and and they are doing their junior prom photo, and it looks really suspiciously like they're doing a Nazi salute. Pretty, yeah, pretty sure it, they are. It, it looks pretty much like the either that or they're big Pink Floyd fans from the wall. The guy had. A, uh, you know. I'm sure they thought it was funny. We've talked yeah. about this before. These kids, you know, people under I, I don't know what, certainly twenty, but maybe even thirty. They just don't have any conception anymore about the reality, the realities of world war ii and what happened and what the nazis did and what fascism did it wasn't just the nazis it was in italy as well Mm -hmm. and it was the japanese as well it was all fascism what did that do to the world tens of millions tens of millions of deaths because of this ideology yeah and because we are now you know 70 years removed from it um it it isn't real anymore. It's just oh that's that's the past. That's history. Yeah. That's not real. And you know I was born. I was just talking to my wife about this last night. I was born only thirteen years after the end 
of World War II. So it's not as if I, you know, lived through it or anything, but it was still mm -hmm. very fresh. Mm -hmm. It was very real, you know, and when I was a kid. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, but you're absolutely correct. There is a disconnect because it was so long ago, and, and, it, and it's just one of those things that maybe people think can just never happen again, you know, in the back of their minds. Uh, I, I don't quite understand it because I've always been of the ilk of, you know, we forget our history, we're doomed to repeat it, and it sure seems like some of us have forgotten our history and what on how devastating the World War II and the Third Reich and that ideology truly was. Yeah, I mean, I, I do I do totally understand what you guys are saying, but remember how, how this photo was captioned, right? Did you see the caption that the original poster wrote on this photo? No. I'm going to quote because I don't want to be... These are not my words. Okay, th okay, this is the quote from what was posted. We even got the black kid to throw it up. Oh, his hand. So don't tell me they don't know the significance of it. I think they do. Yeah. Oh, they or, do. They oh, do. Yeah. Why would they? You know, why they would they do, have said that? They do intellectually, but yeah, they, well, they don't they, emotionally. Well, you know, I I would say that maybe you know maybe not knowing history is an excuse, but like I'm I'm more far removed from from WW two. I'm I'm certainly mm -hmm. more more removed from it than that. And I sure as heck knew in high yeah. school. That that was wrong, wrong, wrong. And I am not very far from Baraboo. And there was a kid that came forward who didn't participate. He's in the photo. He's in the back of the background of the photo. He's not doing it. And he said, in that moment, I was uncomfortable. I was very hurt. I was very scared for the future. It was wrong. It shouldn't be okay. And it's not okay. So I just have a question for all those parents of these kids. What are, what are you doing? Because you're doing something really, really wrong. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I am going to yeah. blame the parents on this one. Yeah, this is, I don't usually do that. But this is this is unreal. I'm sick about it. Absolutely sick. And I you know, the, the photographer said, Oh, I just I asked them to wave. Uh -huh. I said that they should wave at their parents. Okay, that's not how anyone interpreted it. No, that, that's not no. how the kid who didn't participate interpreted it. And I would like to say that yes, they are waving goodbye to any shot of a meaningful future. Yeah. I hope that every, yeah. I, I yeah. hope you're right. I yeah. hope that every college admissions committee in the country takes a look at this photograph, looks at the students that applied from Baraboo, and look to match up a face or a name because God forbid they do something once they get to college that's similar and ilk to this that is yeah. racist in some way. You knew. You knew what they were. They did. They did. And Wisconsin, though, just a side note, has a, a huge concentration of German Americans. It, it, yeah, it does. But it, <laughs> I mean, like even my adoptive grandparents, are, they spoke German. No, but they but, should uh, know. I mean, that really should, should have been racist. taught. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was the yeah. if there's any state that they should be talking about WW2 yeah. because of the people that fled Germany. Yes. You know, th that would be the state because that's where a lot of them ended up. And I should add, you guys, I, I wasn't defending it. In any way, shape, or form. I wasn't saying it's okay. I was just trying to explain it. Uh, that's all. I'm saying, yeah, you because know, because you and I and and any other rational adult would say, how can this be? Where did this come from? Do they not understand? And yeah, I, I think part of it too is it's just selfie culture. It's yeah. just another <laughs> meme. It's just yeah. another meme. You see, could it could it possibly be though dumb kids being dumb kids? Well, of course. You, you, you know what I mean? For a lot of them, it probably was. I, I guess the reason that I was kind of like arguing back against that is because the original poster made that horrible comment, right? And he also the original post was on a private uh, account that other people, some other person, got access to. They copied the picture and shared okay. it, so okay. they knew the picture was wrong enough yeah. not yeah. to share it to the public and they they had that horrible comment with it so who i'm saying i guess i'm saying that a great number of the kids in this photo knew it was wrong they knew it was societally wrong that it was shameful yeah. but they did it anyway and they considered it funny it's like that type of person to me does not belong anywhere at least in my future i i mean maybe as like nothing nothing wrong with this profession but maybe as a janitor I certainly don't want them running anything. <laughs> wow, Clarissa! Wow. Hey, man, I, I have no tol I have no tolerance. I live in a, an extremely multicultural community here. 
um, and I love it. And I love, love, love seeing all the kids that come to the local park here and play together and they don't think anything of race. And then when you see kids that are three times as old as those kids that go to the park doing something like this, it's they have no place in my community. They have no place. I in, agree. In, I, I in agree. The world. That kind of conduct is uh, deplorable, absolutely horrible, and and should not be tolerated in any any form. You're, and I just correct. I don't want to tolerate it. I I don't think they should go to college. I think they should be expelled from the school. Uh, I don't think the photographer should ever be used for anything. Uh, school oh, related, yeah. oh, firing squad is what you're saying. I, that, But that is how I feel about it. I feel like there should be zero tolerance. The fact that there is tolerance in this country for that stuff these days, it's a problem. Well, with now, big problem. now I know it, the First Amendment would not cover this because it is hate speech. No, it's hate so speech. It doesn't, th- cover. it doesn't cover that. But I... I I'm going to be devil's advocate here. Just, I, and it's really hard to be devil's advocate because I think what they've done was absolutely horrible. But my, but the, on the other side, I'm thinking, well, they're kids, okay? Now, do we blame the kids or we, or do we blame the adult influences that allowed that to happen? Oh, oh both, both. <laughs> I pick both. I pick yes. C yes. because both. I reject your binary question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you both. Both of them yes. suck. Yay! Good idea. Yes, I pick both. I I don't think there's. I mean, if like I would hope that a parent would be just as appalled, you know. And, and I think there's obviously. I'm sure there were some parents that were appalled. I, I would, you know, because so. a lot of this was probably peer pressure, you know, yeah. for some people. So find the ringleader and and and, and uh, you know, have a have a trial for him like a Nuremberg style. Yeah, I'm I'm totally all right with that. Yeah, I would, I would like you to answer for this. Because, I mean, this is one of these things that, you know, like I did stupid stuff when I was a kid. Um, it wasn't hate-based. I didn't do stuff like this, you know? Like I'd be embarrassed of some of my old high school plays making it on the internet just because I wasn't maybe very good, you know? Sure, like sure. that I wouldn't be happy with. But did I take any like hate-based photos or hate speech or anything? No. Nope, and, nope. You're, again, that is horrible, and it will not be tolerated. And I hope that, at the very least, these children, because that's what they are, they're they are children, learn the lesson about tolerance, and more importantly, well, I shouldn't say more importantly, but and history and what that signifies. That salute, yeah, of all the horrible yeah. atrocities that signifies. Okay, moving along. Where would you like to go next? All right. So there are some very odd sort of crimes coming up that are are related to very like little things. Do you ever see somebody just get like weirdly outraged over something very, very small? Yes, I have. No reason. I have. Yeah. Yes. Several times. So yeah. So like recently, and this is actually kind of disturbing if you look this up. There's a link to it on ABC. There is a woman in I think it's like Santa Ana, California who came in the back door of a McDonald's and started beating and choking the manager because they didn't give her enough ketchup at the drive-thru. Well, you know, I have seen people go crazy when they haven't got enough (laughs) mail packets, but never, (laughs) never over ketchup. (laughs) I love ketchup, though. I mean, ketchup is kind of important. I it, just, it is an important know. condiment, don't get me wrong, but normally they're stingier with the mayo than the ketchup. In the hierarchy of condiments. You're, so you're saying mayo is, is over the ketchup? Well, I would saying. say because for price. Uh, not yeah. not not for not for flavor, but for price. <laughs> Generally speaking, mayo would be your more higher you end. You have Joel on the defensive here. He doesn't know what to do next. <laughs> Uh, yeah right no but it's ketchup see moment. Right, right because i go to a, i go to a fast food restaurant with a end. certain woman that i will not name here on air and she asks for mail packets each and every time when they only pull up pull me up two or three she's almost despondent i'm gonna go up there and i'm gonna get some more that's how i feel about jack-in-the-box dressing for the southwest salads first of all sell that stuff why do you not sell it? Why can't I buy it? <laughs> because. 
God. God. I mean, they'll give you more than one, but I just want to buy it. I just well, want it on my okay, own. Okay, so this lady goes nuts because she didn't get enough ketchup? Yeah, like really nuts, though. I mean, she's actually choking. Like, wow. she punched and choked. Like, there's a video because they have the cameras in the back, you know, of McDonald's. So, like, there are multiple views of this wow. attack. That would only be acceptable if it was the last packet of ketchup. <laughs> Well, I don't. Maybe it was. I, they didn't say the very last on Earth, the last one. That, that the only time on a, Earth. Yeah, the only time a brawl would be acceptable is if it was the very last ketchup on Earth. But but like my favorite part of this video is that okay, so there's one person, the manager, who is getting literally choked, right? And then you've got the fast food worker who is at the window, <laughs> manning the window, and she's trying it's to so save funny. her coworker from dying. She. <laughs> Still gives the person at the window their change. What? And then rejoins the brawl. Yeah. So, so they stop to. That just tells you how much they enforce the point of sale at that fast food restaurant. No matter what's happening here, there could be <laughs> no certain what? death going on right behind you. You will give correct change. There is I mean, no exceptions. Yeah, she's in the middle of a brawl where someone's getting choked out and she's like, hold on a minute. And she like runs to the window, gives the change <laughs> to this person. Yeah. It's one of the best videos you might ever see. Oh, so go to ABC good Lord. and check that out. They still have not identified her yet either. She's on the loop. Uh, <laughs> the ketchup bandit is on, uh, you know, on the run. She is. She's she's on the loose. Mm. She didn't get enough ketchup. So that was interesting, I thought. And then there was another one um, out of Florida. Ah, yes, Florida. Yes, she is. Uh, the uh, she was found. She found out the hard way that nine one one. I didn't know this, by the way. Did you know that they don't arrange Uber rides? No, I did not. I would have thought that would have been the first place I call for an Uber. It would be nine one one. Hey, you have the number. It's easy. It's easy to remember. Apparently they don't. Yeah. Oh, oh, reminds me one time I told someone call nine one one. What's the number? Are you serious? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yes. Well, I've seen something similar. Call nine one one. The person then shouted out nine one one. So, so this apparently happened in Palm Beach, Jeez. Florida. Yes, a woman named Emily Powell, 32, she was having difficulty arranging an Uber, right? Mm, mm. So she calls, I don't know why she was having difficulty, but some people are technologically challenged, right? So sure. um, she's waiting to figure out this Uber thing, and then she flagged down a passing squad car in Boca Raton to help her request an Uber, and the officers were really awesome about it. They, you know, I guess they weren't doing anything else, so they're like, oh, okay, we'll help you Excuse figure me. out. They, they help her. Sure. She gets in an Uber, and then she calls 911 again from inside the Uber driver's car to ask for water. <laughs> wow. Well, it depends on how parked she was. It might have been an emergency. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, she doesn't look like she's inches from death in her mugshot, yeah. but. Hello, 911. This Uber driver insists on running the heat in this car. It's so <laughs> hot. Oh, I need some water. <laughs> I've been in here for 30 seconds. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, my heavens. It's a real emergency. It's not a fake one like the Uber thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, it was. <laughs> what was going on there? It was very. Very interesting. So yeah, she she's it's a misdemeanor. She she could get um a thousand dollars. Oh man, that's a lot. You can buy a lot of water for a thousand. Right? I know, I know. So that that's kind of sad. And um, ooh, I don't know why this strikes me as one of the funniest things I've ever read. And I I do actually apologize to the victim for saying that, but I it it really is one of the, I laughed out loud. Uh, um, a man is denied bail after trying. To throw his partner overboard. <laughs> I mean, trying so he didn't actually complete the act. No, he didn't. So, so you know, you hear about these cruise ship deaths, which are awful, right? Because they're, it's, they're it's horrible. a huge. I think a castaway. Yeah, it's a huge ship. There's no way they would hear it or see it. You know, if you get thrown overboard yeah. and it's in the water, yeah. like what jurisdiction is it? You, you never find the body most of the time. So, these murders are awful, and it seems like we're hearing about them. Uh, you know, on a more frequent basis. 
So there was a five-night cruise to Tasmania that ended with a man behind bars for allegedly trying to throw his partner off the balcony and into the sea. He just didn't succeed in getting her over the balcony. Oh, she fought back, did she? She did, and people heard screaming, and an alarm went off. It was at a uh, 3:30 a.m. Uh, people heard of so people in adjoining rooms, right? They could hear this vicious argument. Yeah, and they, uh, you know, could and I guess some sort of alarm went off eventually, and so he basically attempted to murder her. He just didn't didn't get her overboard, and and I keep thinking to myself, I'm like. He just you, sucked at it. Well, like, <laughs> he was how horrible. You, how do you explain that, right? Like, yeah. after you're fighting, you try to get him off the balcony, you realize it's not going to happen, or you're like, no, nah, just kidding. You're getting out of here. Like, Go for a walk. I, I mean, how, how uncomfortable was the rest of that cruise? Like, what do they well, do with you? I don't understand. How does this work? They, they lock you in a broom closet, and, and they feed you pancakes and taunt you with making you, know, you is watch. Is there, like, a break? Making you watch the Poseidon adventure over and <laughs> over and over. Shelly Winters is awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's, I just saw that, actually. My mother was watching it. And I sat down and thought, wow, this is, ooh, oh, oh no. Oh, really? Oh, and then the movie was over. I watched the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. It was not a bad movie. The Gene Hackman version, the original, is much better than the remake, by the way. The remake. Oh, is, yeah, that was yeah. the one we were watching. Yeah, naturally. yeah, you got the Gene Hackman one not not the newest remake one with i even uh, forget the names i can't remember who was in it it was that forgettable i think it was uh Shaw. yeah it was uh oh 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 um uh, kurt russell was in that one he was in oh, the remake was it, so yeah it was kurt russell but anyhow yeah yeah and so the guy goes to throw his wife girlfriend whoever it was over the side of the boat and of course the alarms ensue probably spotlights come on and the, did he try to run away? I mean, where would he run to? I was just kind of curious of where he might run to. Hello. Who's running where? What's going on here? <laughs> exactly. I think that we lost Dr. Cole. It would appear so. All right. What, what was the last thing said? And what were you asking about? Running? No, I was just curious. I will answer. It's you not like he had anywhere stuff. to run to. No, he had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You know, Thank so you. it would appear that Dr. Cole is not able to join us at the moment, but we'll get her back up and running as soon as we Let's can. Let's reconvene with her. Well, we will reconvene. We got a little bit more time to kill. How are we going to break? And I'll try to hook that back up. I'll try to get hello? her. Oh, there hello, she hello? is. Thank God. We thought, maybe, we thought maybe the flames got to you. No, 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 no. I wasn't thrown overboard either. I was oh, just going to reveal God. I was going to reveal the name of the guy. Oh, cuz you were like gone. You had us all no. worried. We thought you were thrown overboard and you had to go you know, walk the plank. No, I was oh. his I was looking for the perpetrator. His name was Mr. Fish. Mr. Fish. <laughs> yeah, swear to God. So yeah, I was, was just curious, name. where would you run to if you're the perpetrator on that ship? I don't know. I, mean, I, I think I would just try to convince the person that I was just kidding. You know oh, what I mean? just joking. Isn't that a great... Yes, April Fool's late and you fell for... <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Whoops. I was just kidding. You could swim, right? You <laughs> yeah, that. you're a strong swimmer, you. Don't worry. <laughs> and it was such a devastating... April Fool's trick, it wasn't even April mm, 1st. That's how great it was. Mm -hmm. It could be used all year long. That's that's that one. All right, Dr. Cole, where would you like to go uh, after Mr. Fish tried to throw the unwitting victim over the side of the boat? Words like well, this, next? I, I found this headline very odd because I didn't know what it was. So I, I actually clicked on it because I didn't know what it was. Uh, swatter. Oh, I know what swatting fatal... is. Yeah. yeah, you need to. So, why don't you explain this? Swatting you're... is over video games. So, if you don't like somebody and you find out where they're from and stuff, and let's just say there's somebody you don't like that you play online games with, you can mm -hmm. call the police and actually have a SWAT team, like, say, there's a matter with a gun in that house. And yeah. the, the SWAT, SWAT will show up and kick their door in. And, and of course, you know, usually it's, it's a prank, is what it's meant to be. It's it, if somebody you don't like, you have them swatted, right? Well, this one evidently went swatting wrong. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. So, yeah, there was a guy named uh, Tyler Barris, 26 years old. He pled guilty to f 51 federal charges related not just to the fatal 911 hoax, 
but also to bomb threats against the FCC and FBI headquarters Jeez, earlier that earlier that same month, which resulted in sort of other swattings, I guess, which some of which led to building evacuations. I mean, I, I don't understand. Uh, they I'm better not... put that guy away for a yeah. long time. Yeah. Uh, it's, again, it's this whole internet mentality, and I, I would refer, at least slightly anyway, tangentially, back to the picture, the SWAT, mm-hmm. the Sig Heil picture we were referring to earlier, where it's not real somehow. If you know someone through online means, if you're a gamer, if you're playing games with them, they... Those relationships, there, the existence of those other people, is in some way hypothetical to people yeah. because they couldn't behave the way they do or do the things they do to people if they thought they were genuinely real yeah. people. Yeah, it's so odd. I mean, I guess I didn't really think about that sort of stuff. You know, before I began my my career with, you know, working with law enforcement, but it's like now I think about something like that and and I see guys getting suited up just to do cell extractions, you know, like a like a, a mini sort of SWAT extraction team. And then I've actually helped train SWAT teams uh, out here. And just knowing the guys, you know, and and a few of the women that I have helped train doing SWAT, it's really scary for them you know yeah yeah cause it, it's scary they, for them yeah they don't know what they're walking into no you don't know what you're walking into and most of the time if it's a SWAT situation it might be like hostage you know situation mm. where people are very jumpy very much on edge very trigger happy and those guys all want to go home to their families too yeah you know wow. so it's it's a terrifying situation and this guy what you said he's 26 yeah, 26. that's a little old to be doing swatting. I jokes. agree. I mean, you know, it, was, it was only a few years ago, so he would have been like twenty three, I guess, yeah, maybe when it old happened or to know better. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, how can you not yeah. think about that? Like they're they are just, you know, I don't know. I don't know how he. I guess he said that the person that that was killed that he was holding his family hostage. That was the story that he gave. Well, them. They'll get SWAT to show up. Oh man! Yeah, so then they killed, of course, the the person that was being swatted, right? Yeah. And, and so it ended up deadly. So it's it's homicide by cop at that point. Correct, and and so I guess the police responded. One officer shot and killed a man named Mr. Finch because the officer said he didn't comply with the commands to keep his hands up, and it turned out the uh, that the address was a fake. And Finch had nothing to do with the online gaming dispute at all. Wow. Okay. So now the cops killed a guy because he couldn't keep his hands up, which that's going to be problematic down the road for him because then the police uh, opens him up to civil liability, the police. Yeah, but potentially. So, but in a SWAT yeah. situation, you generally think that the, the person's bad. That harkens, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that harkens back to that Arizona where the guy said, put your hands up. He wanted to be a contortionist. And, yeah. and he couldn't do it, so he shot him anyway. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, that's just horrible. That's just horrible news. And I keep looking at the top one that you have here, and, and I keep my eye just keeps going to it, the religious zealot thing. Oh, man, this is weird. This is weird. So religious fanatic jailed for 10 years, this is in Australia, for convincing his wife to end her own life. So... He convinces his wife. To, why would he want his wife to die? He wanted his wife. So Graham Robert Morant, he's 69 years old. He's kind of a self-styled religious pastor. He convinced his 50-something-year-old wife, Jennifer, to take her own life so that he could use her life insurance to build a bunker in preparation for the rapture. Oh, that old young. Well, that's not convoluted. <laughs> no. I know. I'm so confused. So like, A to B to C to Q to Z. So this guy, this religious leader, I use that very term very loosely. <laughs> he yes. he convinced his wife to end her own life. Now, was did he help her, or, or he just planted the seed in her head? I mean, 
he it was, said that he did assist her, but it doesn't say exactly how, I don't think, in, in the article. But mostly it was just conversation. Like, just... You should just go ahead and her. kill yourself. You know? Yeah. Do it for the greater good. God will reward you when you get up there. Just do it because we need the money to build a bunker for something that may not happen. But hey, what the heck? Let's get it done anyway. I mean, man, if I'd been her. (laughs) Well put. If I'd been her, I'd be like, okay, you're 69. I'm 56. Guys typically have a shorter lifespan. If anybody's building this bunker, it's me. So. (laughs) Well, he wanted to hire contractors. Oh, oh, see, I see, I see. Okay, see, you know, that they're makes expensive. It all better. Contractors are not cheap, so oh, you know. My goodness, it's... it's crazy. So there's there's no precedent though, and there isn't really a precedent here either. So this is you know for someone essentially just talking someone into it. Well, look at the, the... girl over the phone though. Remember about a year, year and a half. That's true. That's true. But that... everything is being contested in that case because she was a minor, and so that's. Everything's being contested in in her case. I don't think she's going to end up serving much more time. Um, and in Australia, they didn't have any sort of precedence for it, precedent for it. So he's going to serve ten to fourteen years. Wow. So the girl, though, just to back up to do an update on the story from about a year and a half ago, where she goaded mm-hmm. her boyfriend into killing himself over the phone, and she's going to get off scot free, pretty much. Um. Let me see if I can. I can never remember her name. Yeah, I'm just kind of um, curious because, man, that was such a horrible story. Because, I mean, she was like, come on, you should just do it. Just kill yourself. Uh, just- Michelle Carter, yes. Michelle Carter. Um, she was. She only got 15 months anyway. Um, and her lawyer is basically saying that, one, it was free speech. And, two, um, she was a minor. And so some of those issues apply. And I don't disagree with that. I don't know about um, the free speech. That teeters the yeah, line. Yeah, that, I mean, that I, free speech I don't agree with. But the fact that she was, you know, like sixteen at the time, your brain isn't as as oh, you know that old yarn. <sighs> so um, so wait a minute, wait, 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 hold on, Doctor Cole. So you can be sixteen, murder a crap ton of people, and say my brain isn't developed yet, and get away with it. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> I mean, Heck come on. No. Let's not give anyone an, a, a legal defense for later by accident here. No, oh, you gosh, cannot no. murder no, no. people Espe- and then claim that your brain wasn't developed. It will not no, work. No, especially in California. You're going to get charged as an adult. Okay. You're going to do 25 <laughs> to life is what's going to happen. The only thing it's, that's going to be better for you is that you might get a shot at paroling earlier than, say, wooden box. Uh, okay. That's because you were a youth of youth offender but that's about it no it doesn't get you out of any sort of culpability and i feel the same way about the kids in the photograph you know there's a lot of impulsivity in youth there's a lot of bad judgment in youth you know your brains aren't developed yet but that being said one was a crime and the other is just flat out hate speech and applies to large groups of people how great but we wanted to put those same kids not to argue with you of course i'm not trying to be argumentative but we want to put those same kids that are doing the Zeke High thing. They, we want to put them in front of the firing squad. No, no, no. I just don't want them to get into good colleges. Y- y- you know, Let me so, be clear. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, no, I hear you. So, I mean, it's one's death and one's just bad taste, really. I mean, Well, well so. one is like blatant racism and hate speech, and I don't well, think that that has any – in higher institutions, I, I don't think there's any place for that. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I hear you. I'm, they I'm, shouldn't get rewarded for that kind of behavior. Ex- exactly. Right? I 100% agree with you. There should be no reward for them for doing what they did. And do I agree with the young lady getting off pretty much really light oh, for – yeah. involving I, I mean, herself no. in this murder. I think that's completely a miscarriage of justice. Um, and using my brain wasn't developed yet de- defense, I don't think really should... Uh, she knew what she was doing. She knew what well, she, she was could, doing. She got off kind of light in the first place, but part of that was because of the fact that there isn't really a precedent for yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, there's no law on the books, essentially, that says you can't, you know convince someone well, to kill themselves what if, there's just nothing on the books for that hypothetically dr cole let's just say i walked up to someone that's clearly mentally ill has depression problems is mm-hmm. teetering on the verge of suicide and i just say you know what go ahead go kill yourself get it done with why not all the pain will be over would i not be culpable in some extent to that person's death 
Um, yeah. Oh, I think you would. Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, I, I think maybe sort of a depraved indifference mm-hmm. uh, type murder or, or, a, you know, criminally negligent or not negligent. I don't know. Hum, uh, like, God, manslaughter. Well, manslaughter. I'm going to turn this to the wisest yeah. man in the room, of course, the old, the, the, the senior member of the staff. <laughs> what, what, what do you think, Eric? Are you man old? Uh, <laughs> I think that... In the instance of a sort of gentle nudge, probably they'd get away with it. Because how would how would anyone know anyway, right? I mean, if there's not true. evidence of it. This is um, true. Uh, when you get beyond the gentle nudge, like, say, with the, the girl who, who was convicted of it... Uh, that was repetitive and insistent, right? Yes. Pretty much, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a whole different story. And mm-hmm. if it can be, certainly if it's documented, if it's written, if it's recorded, mm-hmm. then that's a whole different story as well. Do I think there should be consequences? Yes, absolutely. If if your actions cause someone else's death, even if it's tangential, absolutely you should. You know, it's that to me sounds like manslaughter. You know, you didn't intend – well, you did intend. You didn't do the killing, right. but but you induced someone else to do so. So mm-hmm. to me, that's pretty similar to unintentionally but negligently directly causing someone's death. I mm-hmm. mean, to me, those seem fairly similar. So if there aren't laws on the books for it, there should be. Yeah, it should yeah. be like a yeah. murder through influence kind of thing. It's very odd, I, you know, and I think it's a very tricky too when it when it comes to suicide in mm-hmm. general, because I, I mean, unlike a lot of other people that do the job that I do, I, I do tend to agree more with the European way of looking at suicide. I, I, I do think it's more of a personal choice. I, I don't ever want someone to to do it, um, but I also don't think it should be criminal. Um, it's it's tough. I think we're very moralistic about suicide here, which makes it difficult for people to talk about. Is it? Is I think it? That's hard. Is suicide a crime? It used to be. It uh, used to be. How and would even they... in the prison, even in the prison system, they used to write people up for, for killing themselves for making suicide. Oh, I was going to say, how yeah. do they serve that term when they're dead? No, but up until quite recently, they used to write people up for for suicide attempts, and you know, it's. I think it's very difficult when you're very, very moralistic about any sort of subject, and, mm-hmm. and particularly suicide. I think Americans in general, are, you know, it's it's never okay under any circumstances. It's it's a crime against nature, crime against God, and I just think it makes it difficult for people to talk openly, which yeah. is a big <gasps> kind yeah. of cure for suicidality, is being able to talk about it. There not, has been you know, a huge, up in where I live, a huge just surge of suicide lately. Oh, gosh. And it's, I've seen some young people, like 17, 18 year olds, doing it. And it's in the paper, uh, newspaper. I'll check the obituary, you know, just, just to look at the newspaper. And, oh, you see these young kids, the, you know, 17, 21, 25. Well, isn't there a very this. strong viral aspect to it, a contagion it aspect? It kind of yeah, seemed that, that way because there, there, impl- there was kind of an influential girl that went to high school around here, and she was really well-liked, and she committed suicide and heartbreaking to everyone in the community. Next thing you know, it's like a rash of them after that. There's a, yeah, there's a huge domino effect is, is what they call it when it comes to suicides. It's like if somebody very popular, I guess, sort of opens that door, um, like when, you know, a famous singer does it, you know, when you talk about like the lead singer of, of, of uh, Lincoln Park, things like that, it, yeah. it kind of opens doors for people. They go, well, if he can do it, then I can do it. And, and I think one of the reasons people are really kind of bad at stop, at least in America, we're bad at stopping that domino effect is because we stigmatize it so horribly. Yeah. That person we really must been do. nuts. Yeah. 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 And just say things like, Oh my God, that's just never okay. And I can't believe with everything he had that he what would do coward. that. And, yes. Yeah. And that's stigmatizing. Yeah. My yeah. gosh, you know, it's like, there's, there's nothing. That's the other thing too. Like, is there anything wrong 
inherently wrong with thinking about it, with having those thoughts? No, of course not. Most people have had those thoughts at some point in their life. And if you haven't yet, statistically speaking, you probably will. I hate to say that, but yeah, most, most of people us. go through it, you know, at yeah. some point. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with it at all. And the more wrong we make it, the less able people are to talk about it, but the more likely they are to do it. Well, I, I personally have struggled with depression many times in my life. Yeah, and, 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 and there have been times where I have, you know, just a peripheral thought, just, just a really yeah. quick fleeting thought is, man, it'd be a whole lot better just be dead. Oh, definitely. You, you I know? think, you know, I have too. I, I have depression and anxiety and OCD and, oh, just a whole lovely cornucopia of things. And I mean, I, I've definitely had thoughts like that at times in my life that have been particularly hard. And I, there's nothing strange about so that. So you're not that's, alone. Anyone that's no, thinking that way, you're, you're not crazy. Alone. You're not nuts. You're not alone. We all, each and every one of us, most of us, if you're a human being, a feeling, thinking, empathetic human being, you're going to have thoughts like that from time to time. And it's absolutely okay. Just don't act on them. If you feel like you need to act on them, or if you are going to act on them, reach out to a friend, a family member, police, anybody that will listen, anybody, and get that help that you need. For me, it, it's it's always been, uh, when I've been feeling down, it's always just been friends. You know, you kind of talk about a little bit, and that gets you through it. But not everybody has a support system. So, And, and if you're really feeling down and out, you can always email us up over here after hours am at gmail.com and we'll definitely hook you up with help that way too so we cannot end this without talking about the reptile shop owner busted after slapping people with his bearded dragon oh my gosh that sounds like a terrible euphemism <laughs> it um, does. So- <laughs> here comes the dragon <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bit of an older story but i hadn't read it and i had to share it so there was a florida man who was arrested for slapping employees with a bearded dragon uh, he's fa- facing multiple charges. So Benjamin Siegel, the owner of Ben Siegel Reptiles in Inc. Florida, yep. in Florida, uh, he was seen on tape throwing the lizard in the air, <laughs> swinging the reptile around and throwing Gatorade on employees and putting the lizard live lizard in his mouth and then hitting employees with it multiple times. Now, there's no video. <laughs> what? So I don't know how this happened exactly. How did he hit him with it when it's in his mouth? That, I don't know, Joel. Multiple <laughs> times with the with the orally orally staged lizard. I so want to know. I I don't know. And so he's charged with battery, right? And cruelty to animals. Bite down too hard. Yeah, cruelty to animals. But the thing that really made this story just come alive for me was that Siegel store had also made headlines in back in 2012 after 62-year-old Edward Archbold died shortly after winning a live cockroach eating oh. contest oh held by the shop. How did he die from eating cockroaches? An autopsy found that he choked to death after his airway became obstructed by cockroach parts. Oh, icky. Really? Oh, I mean, he could have won a, that a free tombstone. Pie the tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that would say. Oh God. Oh gosh. You know what really oh. bugs me about this guy? No. <laughs> oh man. And I'm thinking, okay, so this shop had been cited before, um, after holding this live cockroach eating contest that ended up killing this person. Like, did you not think cruelty to animals might be a possibility then? Uh, yeah. I guess no one cares about cockroaches. I, I guess maybe. not. That, do I they, where are they in the hierarchy of animals? They're, They're not really like the... animals. Yeah, they uh, insects, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if that were the case, we'd all be in jail for killing spiders. I wouldn't tell anyone I did it, well, but I still know, Sometimes do it. I'm pretty proud when I take down that spider because they're kind of feisty sometimes. Oh, I mean, I'm in Black Widow country. I mean, well, we get into yeah. it out here. You do. It's almost like a hand-to-hand combat with them. <laughs> it's like they're pretty big sometimes. It's You're horrible. up to your elbows in Black Widow. <laughs> Black <laughs> Widows and cockroach parts. Yeah. <laughs> mm, what a combination. Oh, yeah. Just like mom never made. Mm-mm, good. <laughs> Wow. On that note, we got to get out of here. We come back. We're going to be talking all things arson. Uh, Really, how arson is used in crime. And it's more prevalent than I even thought. A lot of different ways arson is used. Don't go anywhere. 
We'll be right back right after this. Hi, Tom Bodette. If you can hear me, then you have an internet connection, which means you can do cool things online, like listen to streaming radio, obviously, or watch a video of a monkey washing a cat. Let your freak flag fly. Or you can book a room at a great price at motel6.com. Isn't the internet wonderful? Everything you want right at your fingertips, and whoa, did not need to see that. <clears throat> I'm Tom Bodette for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I paid more than the minimum each month, and soon enough, it was gone. So you're just giving up? Giving up on what? The life of luxury. Egyptian cotton, caviar Thursdays, designer everything. What are you talking about? Our plan. What happened to winning the lottery and mastering the art of the perfect mimosa? Hosting galas, wearing enough jewelry to require a bodyguard, vacationing in the French Riviera, and then buying it. I just thought maybe it was time to prepare for my future. You know, set some financial goals. Make some smart investments. Open a 401k. Financial goals? Investments? A 401k? You are horrifying right now. Listen, if winning the lottery were easy, everyone would do it. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. <laughs> Northern Tool and Equipment. So me and the boys head out to tailgate today and find some other fans in our spot. Well, it happens. Uh, cheering for the wrong team. Oh, this is war. Even worse, they've got this couch set up and everything. A couch? Yeah, it's a uh, sectional. All right, first thing, don't ever use the word sectional again. Done. Second, I want you to grab a 4,700-pound tow chain with J-hook and grab hammer. Throw that on the back of your truck. Got it. Now you're going to hail Mary the J-hook over the end of that couch. Time to find a better spot for your new friends. That should do it. There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to After Hours AM, the Criminal Code, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Olson and... Dr. Clarissa Cole. Ah, Dr. Cole, we started the show talking about fire, and we're going to end the show, the last hour anyway, talking about fire and arson. Yes, I mean, since the we're having the fires out here, and you know, I thought about it, and I realized that there are a lot of fires that are caused by arson, too, and it just... It's one of those things that doing what I do, I don't actually see a lot of. And so I just wanted to look into it more just to see what was what was out there about. I it. have an intro. Ooh, please. How about that? Yes. Uh, the drama couldn't be more real. Our colleague and good friend, Dr. Clarissa Cole, lives perilously close to the campfire raging through Northern California as we speak, she is on high alert and may have to evacuate at any moment. 
Rampaging wildfires might be the new norm in California and elsewhere as the consequences of climate change come home to roost. But this fire was accidental. What of those that aren't? My brother's home in Lake Elsinore, California, was nearly destroyed earlier this year by a fire that was set deliberately. Starting fire, staring fire directly in the face, Dr. Cole is addressing the heinous crime of arson on tonight's episode of After Hours AM, The Criminal Code. And I turn it over to Clarissa. Amazing intro. Thank oh. you, Eric. That's so sad to, to hear about that, the, about, you know, the Lake Elsinore and it being arson. It's just, it's so hard to fathom, you know, the, this idea, because fire is so destructive and so uncontrollable. You know, um, I think people think that once a fire starts, uh, the fire department gets there and it's just out. But uh, do any of you, I mean, you're not old enough to remember, but do you remember hearing about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory mm, fire? Not real. I mean, I vaguely think I might have heard it somewhere many, many years ago, maybe 20, 20 plus years ago. Yeah, it was a, a, a fire that it was the deadliest to date at that time in 1911. It was the deadliest fire in New York City. So it caused the deaths of 146 garment workers um, wow. who died from, mo- you know, from fire, smoke inhalation or falling or jumping because they started jumping out of the windows to get away from it. Um, and the doors to this factory, I guess, were locked so they could not get out. They were essentially sweatshop workers. Captive and- workforce. Exactly. And so it was a, a terrible, very destructive uh, fire in New York City. And they, they didn't really see another really de- you know deadly one for many 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 years until 1990 in march there was a man named julio gonzalez uh he was kind of down on his l- luck he'd been working at a lamp factory and he was renting at a boarding house he was two weeks overdue on his rent and to add insult to injury his girlfriend lydia feliciano had recently broken up with him and so the day before he'd approached her at this place called the happy land nightclub in the bronx where she was working as a coat check girl. And just incidentally, Happy Land Nightclub was co-owned by the man who was Kathleen Turner's husband at oh, the time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa, that's weird. Mm, yeah. It is weird, isn't it? It's it, because it was a, a small place and it was unlicensed. And it, the okay. reason it was unlicensed is because they had a ton of building code violations. Ah, right? yes, that old yarn. Yes, one of them being that there were no fire exits and no sprinkler system. So there was one entrance and exit to this club. One. And it was wow. down some down some stairs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're packing 100 people into this club with one uh, exit in or out. I don't even care about fire. I don't want there just being one exit, you know, right. to mm-hmm. a place with that many people. So anyway, this is all sort of building up. So this is two years prior. So in 1988, they got these violations. But... The fire department and the you know building code inspectors never followed up with them, so they never shut down and they never fixed anything. And um, Julio Gonzalez, who was the ex boyfriend of, of the coat check girl, got very upset that she wouldn't go back out with him again. And so at about three a.m., he was seen arguing with her near the coat check. And as he's leaving, he basically said, you know, yelled at her, "I'm going to shut this place down for good." And nobody mm-hmm. thought anything else of it. At 3.30 a.m., he comes back with a can of gasoline and a match, and he only got one, do- just, just to give you an idea, one dollar's worth of gasoline. That's it. Wow. At a nearby Conoco gas station and a match. He poured it on the stairs, the only entrance or exit, lit the match, threw it, and walked away. Damn. God. 87 people died. In the blaze, with only six escaping, and of the six survivors, his ex-girlfriend, Feliciano, was one of them. So the wow. one person that he wanted to yep. get revenge on survives. I, I, I mean, while well, survives doesn't mean that she isn't traumatized and probably didn't suffer some type of injuries. Some type of burns, yeah. I think that everybody yeah. was injured. And, I mean, yeah. the, the scene, I guess, most of the people, I guess, died from, from smoke inhalation, but they're, they're, they tried – everything they could to get out, including trying some of the patrons tried before they passed Mm -hmm. out from lack of oxygen, tried to uh, create a hole between the walls of the club and the adjoining room. And they didn't, didn't make it. And that's a horrible way to go. Asphyxiation from smoke. Oh, 
the heat, oh, you know, people yeah. burned. And so, yeah. you know, they they came in and seeing, you know, claw marks on the walls, people trying to, to break through to another mm. another and, you know, another room. Uh, yeah. So 87 people with one dollar's worth of gasoline. And you, a match. you know, that's the thing. You, you, a lot of uh, times in the fires, thankfully, th- I guess, thankfully, the smoke kills you before the fire actually reaches you. But still, there's no pretty death in that scenario at all. I mean, there's no easy way out on that one. That's horrible. And and then to be dying as you're trying to fight your way out and get out of there to safety or at least to another room where there was more room, to, you know, a, a potential for escape. Now, tell me that this guy got the death penalty. He did get life in prison. He got literally got something like uh, several thousand years or something because they compounded the sentences. Sure. I think I want to say he got two sentences for each person or something like that. And I do believe he has since passed away. I do not think that the perpetrator is still alive, um, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look here. Um, but yeah, he, and he admitted too. To, to doing it they they found him like not long after because feliciana was one of the people that survived <laughs> so they questioned her and because she survived and mentioned you know she didn't know either mm-hmm. but you know because she mentioned well i mean i did have an argument with my ex-boyfriend uh they went you know following leads yeah and when they when they found him he uh had there was gasoline all over his uh clothes that they found in his hamper when they found him and then he admitted to everything that he did. Uh, he died uh, of an apparent heart attack in prison. Mm-hmm. Man, Clarissa, makes you wonder why. I mean, the guy's done his luck. I hear you. I mean, why, though? I mean, obviously get the revenge of the woman. But come on. Lighten up the joint like that? That's just... That's is, a, it, is, it, yeah. is it possible people just can't see through... They can't see through to the next few steps the consequences of their actions. It's as if the world stopped when you threw the match down. Is that possible? How how can people justify such things? It's just so bizarre to me. I, well, you know, it's interesting that you say that, too, because, you know, I think, Eric, that he, you know, because he did admit to it right when they found him. I wonder, you know, if that wasn't sort of the case with him. That it was this fit of sort of rage, you know, that he had. He had a dollar in his pocket. He goes to the Conoco station, which is right there, you know, gets a can, you know, dollars worth of gasoline, pours it on the steps, flicks a match down there. And then it just goes up and there's nothing you can do at that point Mm -hmm. aside from, you know, call the fire department or something. And I mean, he goes home and then and then it sinks in what he did. So so there are six types of arsonists supposedly, according to experts. And I didn't know a lot about it. I had to research it before I wrote this up. Right. Sure. Um, the most prevalent type, I guess, of arsonist is the revenge type, which Julio Gonzalez falls into that category. Joel, yeah. You said, you know, jealous and, and revenge. He wanted revenge on Feliciano and, and for everything, though, not just her breaking up with him, but for him losing his job, for him, you know, about to lose his place of residence. Uh, they are often pretty easy to catch, I guess, because mm-hmm. like what you were saying, Eric, they don't take these steps to sort of cover mm-hmm. up what they did. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know. Yeah, I'm surprised. Impulsive. I'm surprised he stayed Acting around. Out. Yeah, I'm surprised no. he stayed in town. I would have thought for sure he would have fled the city, and uh, yeah. you know, and having nothing there to hold him back, being laid on rent and everything else, and knowing what he'd done. I, I'm kind of surprised he stayed around. Do people? Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Do people ever have such a disconnect that it's like, well, I didn't do it. The fire did it. Don't blame me. It was the fire. I've definitely had people say say things like that. I mean, I don't see it quite so obviously. I guess what Mm -hmm. I see most of the time, and I mean, I'm talking like a lot, (laughs) a lot of the time, this is extremely common, is that um, the gun just went off is what I Yeah, I was holding it, and the damn thing had a mind of its own. Next thing you know, it, it went off. The, gun, the gun just went off, or, or it was an accident. It was it accidentally discharged or whatever. And, and you know, I try to be gentle because I know that a lot of that is just sort of denial, or maybe they can't come to terms with what they did. Yeah. But I, I usually try to, if, if I think they're in denial, sort of gently remind them, well, you did bring 
a loaded weapon. Yeah, you brought the knife. To, or you brought the gun. Yeah, to so. the situation, and then you introduced that weapon by pulling it out, mm-hmm. and you cocked the hammer. You know, so like there were a lot of things that you did before that would, you know, that couldn't just mm. happen well, on their own. But yeah. disconnect, absolutely, yes, I see it all the time. Nothing, all the time. nothing escalates aggression like a presence of a firearm. No, exactly. But there, there is that disconnect, though. There, yeah. you know, like Eric, Eric, what you were talking about, that uh-huh. disconnect of like I didn't, like I didn't do it. It was the fire. I can what I, I the devil. Away. The devil made me do it. I mean, that's not that far removed from that statement, too. So no. yeah, it practically is. I know it's. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody who who was who was setting fires did. I, you know, what I could see them saying is, "Well, I set the fire, but why didn't they escape?" Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, where there's sort of this disconnect. But like in in the case of these revenge arsonists, that being like the first type and the most prevalent type, that is so terrifying because because exactly what we were talking about, it just seems like they're not thinking ahead at all. No, no me, it's not a whole lot of steps forward to fiery death and destruction. I mean, yeah. you know, think I, I, I don't know. It, it, it just seems like you'd have to be willfully blind in order to be able to do something like that and to not see it see the consequences two three steps ahead in your mind if i do this then this this and this will happen and yeah. i mean it just seems like that may, may must not have happened uh, unless this is you know just one of the most evil people in human history mm-hmm. but i i don't know maybe maybe he was I mean, it certainly does almost seem that way, given that he put the gasoline on the stairs. Yeah, you know? knowing that he was the only... He could have gone down to... Yeah. yeah no, and he, because she worked there for a while. He knew it was the only entrance and exit. He'd yeah. been there many times. He could have taken the gas can down to the coat check and thrown the gas on her. Yeah. And not that that would have been okay, but you know what I mean? Like, that yeah. would have been more targeted, more specifically... Re- like, to me, it does seem... Like he knew what he was doing. You, you he didn't would, want anyone to get out. You, you no would, one. You would think, though, between the act of buying the gas and getting the container, you would think that you would come to your senses. You know, whoa, whoa what am I doing here? You, you know? would think so, yes. You would think so. You would hope to God that somebody would have that realization. But I don't know. Like, think about it in less extreme acts. Like, can we dial it back a notch a little bit? And you're going to have to help me out because I don't. Being a woman, I actually don't understand this as well. But, like, have you seen guys in, like, bar fights that you've been friends with? Yes. You, yes, I have. And, in fact, you know I've I mean? been in a bar fight or two. Yeah, like, explain. Isn't it similar? Do you feel like it's similar at all? It like, is. Like, it's, it's they a, don't realize what they're doing. Yeah, could result in It's a flashpoint. Yeah, it's normally a flashpoint that happens. And next thing you know, they're beating on each other. But there again, alcohol is involved. That's true. You know, but, but there could have been here, too. He was a drinker. You know what I mean? Yeah, there could have been. Yeah, here, like, yeah. often there is. In, in cases of arson, there often is intoxication, either drug or alcohol. So let's say that that's a component there, too. Like, if you go off in a bar fight, couldn't you just as easily kill somebody accidentally? You, you could, but all the ones I've seen or even taken a part in, which is very few. It's not like I'm out there bar fighting every weekend. I used to be a bouncer in a nightclub, believe it or not. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty big guy. I was always a football player, so I was, you know, pretty big guy. And I, I actually worked at a nightclub very similar to what you're describing here, except it was a legal nightclub. And, and, and I, I had to break up my fair share of lover disputes. And they get very heated very quickly. And I could see this guy getting angry like that because I've seen people like that in the heat of the moment. It's It's amazing. How it goes from cool, calm, and collected to flashpoint in minute in seconds, you know, you know, and, and you can't really predict it sometimes who's going to be the ones to fight. But there they are; they're beating on each other. But generally, once you have them outside and they realize that they're just beating on their buddy, they go, "Oh man, what the hell is I doing?" They shake hands and they they go down the street talking about it. A lot of times, yeah. I, I, I mean, Eric, you 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 know used to do music all the time i'm sure you've seen so <laughs> used to right? be in bar fights all the time uh yes i have <laughs> seen many a bar fight i have actually been in one or two <laughs> that's right uh act, but not a, i i wasn't a, a, a willing participant no. i was just sort of cut but uh yeah from the stage uh i have seen many 
bar fights. And usually, often, there's one guy, and he's got a chip on his shoulder, and, you know, he's kind of poking around, seeing who may be amenable to, uh, Throw you down. know, yeah. dissipating, yeah. and and then that leads to it. And... You know, sometimes it's the biggest guy there. Sometimes it's the smallest guy. In my there. experience, though, being a bouncer, it, 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 I would say I would say seven out of ten times it was the little guy. Yeah, I the, believe it. That that was you know the instigator. True. Yeah, That's true. yeah. So, uh, yes, I, I I've seen it, and it's a combination of all the things we're talking about. It's it could be someone who actually is looking. To be beat up, mm-hmm. that's really ultimately what you're talking about. You know, it's kind of like a suicide by cop thing where if you really think it through, that's, that was the ultimate goal. Someone who's just really aggravated, maybe they f- have problems, you know, within themselves. They have some self-esteem, whatever. And what they're really looking to do is get beat up. Well, what's the easiest way to get beat up? Start a fight. That's and, true. You know, that that so, usually does the trick. I mean, so it, it's sometimes things like that. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a relationship problem, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, that kind of thing that starts it. And then other people get involved. Sometimes it's something relatively minor, but people around think they need to be all super tough guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I'll protect you from you know that kind of thing. That's the one, the one sort of fight that I've been in in the last twenty years. That's what it was. I was all super drunk, just an <laughs> idiot. But I saw one friend of mine picking on another friend of mine, and said, "Oh, you can't do that. I'm gonna. You can't. You can't pick on him. You know, blah blah blah." I mean, it was just rolling around. Next thing you and- know, it's a rollicking fight. You got bar stools <laughs> flying everywhere. Eric uh, smashing exactly. the other guy over the head with a beer bottle. Here's where we were rolling around in the back of the van as my <laughs> wife drove home. We are fighting. We're not fighting. We're rolling around wrestling <laughs> in the back of the minivan. Wow. You know, with my wife oh. driving home and oh my god in a god, minivan the- of all things wow the, the that next takes talent. day the next day we both were, felt like such total idiots we actually <laughs> went to each other's houses to apologize cuz uh-huh. it was so retarded oh my god it was dumb and everyone around is like oh my god this is the most stupid thing i've ever seen and and the guy who was being picked on was like no you don't have to defend me yeah, no no yeah, no, yeah. no 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 you don't have to do that you don't have to do that but i mean we were both you know how it is you, you're in a frame of mind sure it, it, for whatever reason there's something negative there's something bugging at something gnawing at you and then you drink too much it does it um, it doesn't take much but you know? uh, but as a bouncer though I got to say, working that profession, I did that for like four years. I got to say, women, by far, were, were more apt to fight, usually, than men were. In that, that's and that's, so weird. That was so weird. And, and I, I hated it because... Go, I don't go out. Because they, they fought dirty, <laughs> you see. The guys were pretty oh, yeah. much throwing punch. No, not girls. They were gouging, kicking, spitting, biting, whatever they could possibly do. And as a bouncer... You, sometimes you'd be in that. St- I, I learned to use a, a wear an athletic cup pretty early on in that career. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're, to get caught up. Yeah, in, they're they're pretty free kickers. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty free kickers. So uh, yeah, learned that right away. But women, believe it or not, have us guys be in the aggression department quite often, and and they are. Let's just say guys don't want to fight women because. <laughs> They do not fight fair all the time, and, and you know, women women are tough. I'm telling you, women are tough. <laughs> I mean, first of all, why would we fight fair? I'm thinking, you know, because we are smaller and weaker. But no, I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. I have not ever had that happen. Not that I watched, would. Don't, don't want to. I watched this lady one time when I was working the bar. She grabbed another gal. This gal had this really long hair, like almost down to the right down to her butt. I watched her grab this blonde-haired lady with the long hair, drag her through the whole entire bar on her back by her hair. 
And that kicking, was not and, nice. And kicking her in the head the whole time. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I I was hit one time. I was I, that's I take that back. I was like I I was hit one time. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't fight though. It's no, just not me. No, no, no. You're a lover, not I, a fighter. I just asked her. If she felt better I, now. We were. I was talking to my wife about this. She she was blindsided once, and we were talking. You know, when you see it on TV, even in, even the shows that are trying to be quote unquote realistic. Mm-hmm. When you see people get in fights, it's never like no. what it feels like no. in the real no. world. No. I got punched once when I was DJing. I was at USC. I was at one of the frat houses. I was by myself. It was very late at night. I was loading my equipment out. It was uh, the house, the frat house opened up to a back alley. I'm parked in this alley at three in the morning. Someone came along and punched me in the head from behind. Oh, my God. Never even, never even saw him. Just punched me in the head really hard. And I went down, and I hit my face when I went down. Like I said, I, this completely caught me off guard. Never saw, never heard, nothing. Total sucker punch. And it hurt like a screaming mofo that was one punch and falling down on my face you see these fights on tv shows even low-key quote-unquote realistic right where they hit each other two three four times as hard as they can big strong guys who know how to fight hit each other in the face four or five times you could kill someone yes you could yes you could kill them I mean, just to, you know, that's the whole point, though, right? Is that you could. You yeah. could kill someone. You could. Really. You could. Like, even, even you falling down and, and, and you know, hitting your face, which I am yeah. sorry, that really sucks. But, like, couldn't you, I mean, Eric, what if you had fallen into something with a, a sharp corner? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I felt, I, I was flattened, you know. Ton just, of bricks down on the ground. Just, yeah. just boom, down, yeah. hit my face. And, and if you hit in just the right stunned. way. And you're yeah. stunned. That's the thing. That's what they don't show on TV, right? A person gets hit. They just go, yabbity, yabbity, yabbity. And they're right back <laughs> in it and everything's okay. No, you are stunned yeah. for many, many seconds yeah. if you no, get hit in the head. It, it, it's dangerous. And, and most of the people I dealt with as a bouncer, they had no clue how to fight because, well, A, they're inebriated pretty good. And B, let's just, let's just uh, face it, they're not mixed martial artists here. So, you know. Was it like there's a whole lot of real punches being landed? A lot of hugging. A lot of hugging going yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a crazy – It's I, I guess all of that is sort of just to say, though, that, you know, you've got these cases where, you know, like Julio Gonzalez, where arson is, is what happened. But sure. I do feel like the impulsivity is kind of the same. I mean, mm, I, think I feel so. like – you know, there's lots of people that get in fights on a maybe even fairly regular basis oh, yeah. that could result in someone's death. And actually, there was one. Um, yeah, I can talk about it now because I think it's been adjudicated. There, were, there was one up at a club when I used to live up in the Shasta area in Reading where that exact thing happened, where a guy started a fight with another guy and he fell just wrong into like a chair or something and it, he died. It's it's just not that hard because it you're, isn't. Ta- you're talking about the head and your brain's there, right? And mm-hmm. uh, it, it you could it's just like you say it's just falling the wrong way, hitting it the wrong way, hitting it on the wrong part of your head. You have vulnerable spots on your head. Yeah, it was like you know? kind of toward his temple, and and it yep. it just that was that was well, it. You like and, yeah, well, and the exactly. funny thing uh, that like not funny, the horrible thing about it. They had you know the video of of this because they're they're you know security cameras. It it's in seconds. It just takes Whoa. seconds because it was the yeah. same sort of thing. You sort of sucker punched the guy. The guy goes down, hits his head. He dies. Now the guy is up for second degree murder yeah. because it was intentional. He went yeah. after him to a certain extent, you know, not to kill him necessarily, but that's what happened. That so, was the result of the attack. That was the that was, was the, the result. Death. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think about these arson cases and i'm like how is this different yes they're using fire and yes there's the potential to kill many people as opposed to one but it does happen like okay there there was a second case that i wrote up that is i feel like it's super disturbing personally um even though it's not as glaring as the the julio gonzalez case 
Uh, his name, believe it or not, is well, Thomas Sweat. How about we oh, go we, ahead and we let's take go a, to break. Yeah, yeah, let's go to break. And uh, I just wanted to say really quickly, the reason why quit bouncing was not because of the physical violence when the gunfire started mm. is when I had to quit because they Ugh. went beyond fighting to now using firearms. And that was where I was pretty much done at that point. So let's get out of here. Let's go to break. We come back. We're going to cover the second case of arson death by fire don't go anywhere we'll be right back right after this Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? My backyard. Oh, your backyard. Try telling a bear that. I did, and this bear talked back. Talking bear, that's rich. No, wait, it was Smokey Bear. Smokey? Why didn't you say so? I did say so. Continue. I was burning yard waste. No, boy. He told me to burn legally and responsibly, and to remember that if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. And as always, he's right. You know, 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. That means 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Yeah, I know that now. Thanks to me. Actually, thanks to Smokey. As usual, the talking bear gets all the credit. Get your Smokey on. Always burn responsibly and contact your local fire department for open burning regulations. Because 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Northern Tool and Equipment. I got a uh, rather serious problem over here. All right, what are we looking at? Cranky mother-in-law asleep on the couch in the man cave. Dear God. It gets worse. That's impossible. She's passed out on the remote. I stand corrected. But what do I do? Okay, I want you to grab a Torrin Big Red Hydraulic Bottle Jack. Uh, okay. Now you wedge that bad boy in under your mother-in-law and crank her up skyward. It's working. Man the remote. Great. Now grab that torn big red two-ton folding shop crane and put that woman on wheels. And away we go. There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Welcome back to After Hours AM, The Criminal Code. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Olson and... Dr. Clarissa Cole. And Dr. Cole, uh, why don't you go ahead and give that information again, because you gave it once at the beginning of the show again, where, where people can call in and get more information about loved ones and also, I suppose, to report that they are safe. So with this fire going on. And again, we're, we're, you're also located... Darn near in the epicenter of the fire. I mean, you're on the outskirts of this raging wildfire in California as we speak. Yeah, I'm about 20 miles away from the the camp fire, as it's called. And and there's lots and lots of missing people. Um, And I just wanted to let you know that they've actually, the the sheriff's office has released a a list, a running list of missing missing persons. So I'm encouraging you, if you know people that live, you know, in the area that's affected, go and look at this list, see if you know anyone that is on it. And if you are on it, call them, let them know that you're okay. Um, the, it's, it's the Butte County Sheriff's page. So Butte County is B-U-T-T-E County dot net slash Sheriff Coroner. And if you go there, they have a missing persons list that is active. And if you, and on the flip side, if you want to report someone missing, please go there or you can call 530-538-6570 and they will take your report. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Cole, for letting everyone know that. All right. Yes. The next the next case that I was going to talk about is, oh, man, he is what you one would term a serial arsonist. OK, so for more than 30 years, a man named Thomas Sweat set hundreds of fires in the Washington, D.C. area. Dang. So 30 yeah. years. And he said that he he set in his estimation, he set well over 300 fires. Wow. So he's a true fire bug. Yes. The classic. 
the classic sort of fire bug. Yeah, and he, and he had a, like a homemade device that he used. He he filled apparently he filled a milk jug with gasoline with a fabric plugged opening that mm-hmm. he used as a wick. And so the fire would burn up this fabric wick, consume the container for about twenty minutes before the fumes and gasoline. Twenty were set minutes, off. huh? Yeah, he he had a special wow. way of doing it. I guess that I don't want to share with anyone that it would allow it to sort of smolder for 20 minutes and allow him to get away if he wanted to or to just sit and watch and typically he was not going for casualties so he was setting these in in places where he did not expect people to be but Mm -hmm. some people did die and uh his targets were usually this is the weirdest part usually men that he found attractive oh so if they were cute in his estimation he wanted to kill them wow well no, because then he would have set their houses on fire, and that's not what he did. Ah. He would follow them home, and instead of, like, approaching them and just talking to them like, you know, a normal person, he would put an incendiary device in their car, in the driveway, and that then, sort of thing. And then show up and be the hero. Oh, my God, it's on fire! <laughs> no, he would just watch from a safe distance, and he did this many times many times and there is one time where it resulted in multiple fatalities unfortunately the man went home he had a wife and kids who lived upstairs he set the incendiary device on this man's doorstep which was on the lower level but the house the door frame in particular caught fire very quickly and since the family was asleep as the house started to go up i guess the the man's wife died from from smoke inhalation and two other elderly women also uh, died because something caught fire near there and they couldn't get out. So they finally did catch him. And yeah, he's implicated in over 300 fires. Wow. That, that is, is, is why? That, yeah. Is there a why? Yes. So again, there's the six type, uh, six types of arsonists, right? And now Thomas Sweat would absolutely qualify as the pyromaniac type, right? Mm. These are, pathological fire setters so while he did have a reason as far as setting some of the fires when it came to you know an attractive man that sort of a thing he didn't always he didn't always have a reason at all he just found the act itself to be uh, a sexual release if you will which is why he's which is why he stayed to watch a lot of the fires it was so he could masturbate at the same time oh well, that's, wow! That's, yes, it's it's a sexual. Thing. It's better, better, better still. Now, yeah, that's an image I can't. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Erase <laughs> from my mind. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Wow, man! So he would light fires and play with himself. Yes, and he would stick around for that reason. He liked to see people fighting the fires. He liked to see the chaos. The, the ensuing chaos also kind of turns them on. A pyromaniac. Um, a lot of times they are there watching or videotaping in some instances. Um, we've seen that before. There, there's another type, um, the, the vandal type. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that type is often a teenager, and they often videotape as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're, they're unlike other types of arsonists. They, thrill they, they work in pairs. Yeah. yeah they're thrill, the thrill, sort of the vandalism. The crimes are committed sort of out of a belly, a rebellion sort of an attempt to destroy stuff. I mean, there's there's sort of like the practical types, the crime concealment type or the insurance claim type, you know? Yeah. Where it's, for, where it's for a financial motive or for a crime motive. So, you know, this struck me as weird, though, the crime concealment thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, because my brain is twisted, right? If I'm going to set a fire, it's going to be to conceal, like, a murder or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some, something big. Oh, no. The most popular reason to set a fire is to conceal a burglary what I know. That, that makes no sense uh, that, that, that makes Talk about adding insult to injury y- yeah I'm God. so confused by that whole thing like i totally thought it was going to be to get away with murder and yes that has happened in in multiple cases right if you research that you'll see mm-hmm. that but I assumed that's why they'd be well, setting the fires. Oh, and, no, it's because they stole something. And fire does not get rid of all evidence. No, it doesn't. Not it, even close. No, Are you kidding me? No, they can still get fingerprints off things that have been burned, too. They can get DNA. Yep. They can get, oh, man, it doesn't. And plus, like, if you are thinking of starting a fire to cover a murder, first of all, don't. There's just no way. I'm sorry. And it, it won't cover it. It just won't. No. Like, and. Unless there's smoke inhalation in the lungs of the victim and that's the only thing wrong with them. The person would have to be 
almost they would have to be just cremated like nothing but ashes left of the victim right which mm. doesn't happen and no. people don't understand that no. like in a typical house fire that's not enough that that no. is not going to cremate a person when i was a kid when i was in high school i almost took up the profession of being a, a, a well an embalmer a mortuary guy uh, mm-hmm. you know one of them what, what's the proper name it, I'm, it's escaping me yeah, a medical moment. examiner yeah or yeah and and and, and I, I knew the guy in my local town his name was keith really nice guy and he said you know if you're really seriously thinking about this why don't you come in for an autopsy hey, and why don't, why don't you come in for an embalming i'll get mm-hmm. the family's consent because you know we still got to make sure that you can witness this because it is a procedure and their family member you should come on down and really see what you're going to get yourself into. Make sure it's what you want to do. And, and I couldn't sit through it, but we were talking about cremation. And he's like 21, 2300 degrees. These things would oh, run yeah. at. I mean, yeah. it's just unreal. And for a long period of time. Yeah. A long period of time. A couple too, hours. It's like, yeah. It's, and they have to turn the body multiple yeah, times. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a quick thing. It, it, it takes a very long time to cremate a body. At extremely high temperatures, mm. the body typically has to be turned. Now, people don't understand. They think, like, a fire is going to do it. And I'm like, no, not even close. There's no. so much physical evidence no. left. The, yeah. That's the problem kind of with the campfire, though, right now, is that that fire, because of the, the sheer, you know, magnitude of the fire, yeah. that one is probably hot enough and burned long enough that it probably did destroy a lot of of remains how many um, crimes do you think though in the backdrop of this fire could potentially be committed and, and no one ever find out because of the fire yeah you, you know i mean oh gosh quite a, quite you a know, few i mean perfect yeah, opportunity if, if it's a fire like this yeah if you had time commit all the crimes you can because little boy can see it no i mean you never know what's going to burn and what isn't though i yeah. mean that that's the thing that is so interesting to me i mean there there was a story today in in a, a local paper here about a man and a wife who went back to the house to see if they could salvage anything right mm-hmm. and if you've seen any of the pictures it's decimated yeah, everything is luck. gone and they shared pictures of their home right their home was rubble nothing but yeah. rubble and some granite countertops that they recently had installed and the man went back there looking for his wife's wedding ring because she'd set it on the counter before washing dishes Oh. He found it. Oh, wow. It survived. Man, because wow. it was on that granite. Maybe. It's like, how? It, yeah. I mean, that's that's just it. You know, like, there were shops where the almost the entire shop was burned, and then, like, a sign here or there is fine. It's like, yeah, who it's knows? Weird. Like, it's, it's chance. Yeah, a fire behaves very strangely. So if you're going to try to cover something with fire, I would say just, like, don't, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you don't know. You don't know what it's going to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that one yeah. clue. You know but, what I mean? You leave a handprint on the French door, that glass will be and, there. You and, know what I mean? But when I was talking to this funeral, funeral home director, why it takes so long to cremate someone? He says, remember, you're mostly water. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You, you, it's actually very hard to, I mean, he says, of course, you, know, you want a graphic detail, but body fat and that burning I was burst, just going to say, and, the, you, I was actually I mean? going to bring up the fat. And I was like, the fat and the oils is another. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it, it was actually kind of intriguing, but disgusting all at the same time. So. Uh, I have a strange sort of morgue related uh, tale very quickly. Oh, I love morgue related tales. I'm a sucker for a good morgue. <laughs> uh, I, I lived in a house when I worked at Napa State Hospital. They uh, often at prisons and just so if people don't know in California and m- in multiple places across the United States in state hospitals or prisons, there are often houses that were built on the grounds of those places mm-hmm. um, at, you know, because way back when people would live there. It's kind of akin to an army base, if you will. Sure. There's housing. And so at Napa State Hospital, I lived in a house at, at Napa. Uh, it, just for a little while, about six months, I lived in a state-provided home. Um, and uh, there was, the, you know, where you do laundry. It was like in a, in a basement sort of area. And I went down there and my roommate, I, I was living with a roommate at the time, a social worker, and she went down there and she had all of her clothes all folded up. And she was like, yeah, have you been, have you done laundry yet? And I said, no. And she's like, oh, my gosh, aren't these tables amazing? There's all this space <laughs> and they're so nice. They're stainless steel. I'm like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I just keep doing a lot. Yeah, I was like, huh? You know, she's like, what? Why did you say it like that? I'm like, nothing, nothing. They're fine. And she's like, and look at these edges. Like, you, you like, to, like, what is this to like? catch lint or something and i'm and i'm like okay so don't freak out when i tell you this she's like what i'm like 
that would be a draining table. Yeah, I was going to say, did the drain in the middle of it, not, you know, towards the end, not give it away? That it was... it, She did not see that, and she literally thought it had something to do with wet laundry. She had no idea. <laughs> uh, I think she rewashed her clothes. Oh, uh, you uh, know, know, that was know, probably right? used like, a like, long time ago. Or anything. Yeah. And, and come to find out, so like, I, you know, I knew what it was. She didn't. I told her, and she's like, no, that can't be right. Went to the hospital administration the next day and said, I just want to make sure that I'm right about this. And they said, oh, yeah, during World War II, yeah. this, this yeah. was used for Navy, uh, for the Navy when people were injured. Sure. And your particular house was a makeshift morgue at that time. There you go. There, there you yeah. go. Nothing to be afraid of. It was World oh, so War II at the time. The mortuary par- parlor was okay. where our dining room was and the the where they processed the bodies was in the uh, basement where we did our laundry. Nothing yeah. could possibly be wrong with that scenario. <laughs> it was totally fine. I didn't think anything was wrong with it. Of course, nobody wanted to come over for dinner parties, but okay. That's on you. <laughs> oh, but for Halloween, oh my goodness, that would have been <laughs> I luck. got, really quickly though, I got a story like that. I, I knew people that were eating off one of those tables. Oh no! And, and, and I and I told them because they said, "Wow, this is a really big, nice, sturdy table." Nice. They were using it for tools. Uh, a, a place I used to a mechanic shop. I, he got a really killer deal on these old embalming tables, and they work really great for tools and stuff because it's steel. Yeah, I mean, you can oh, set stuff on it. Beautiful. Nice bit. <laughs> well, these guys, you know, there's a clean one, so they're over there eating chow. And I said, oh, you "Enjoy it." Eating up embalming tables? Screw you, no way. And I said, yeah, look at the drain at the end. That was for cutting people up. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I know. She totally thought I was crazy. I'm like, what do you think the little like like the little trough is yeah. around the entire edge? Yeah. What do you think that's for? Y- yeah. 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 So well, yeah. Eric, you're gonna say something before I cut you off, and I didn't mean to do so. Oh, golly, I don't know. It, it's already a couple uh, th- uh, topics back. <laughs> I was just, when we were talking about odd things that survive fires, mm-hmm. um, you know, I had a fire. I'm still sadly known for this uh, in my dorm uh, when I was at uh, college, when I was at Wittenberg University. The Great Wittenberg Fire of 1979? Yeah, uh, it wasn't 79. It was mm-hmm. probably uh, 79, 70, early 77, it was. Okay. And uh, anyway, it was terrible. And it did start in my room. That's a whole other story. Uh, I was not ultimately held culpable for several reasons, including the fact that the fire extinguisher was missing. Oh, no. Number one. And number two, better still, the sprinkler system for the entire nine story building was disconnected. Oh, did they want you to die in case of a fire? No I think they wanted everyone to die in case of fire. And someone almost did. Someone who literally slept through, this was like, you know, two in the morning or something, slept through the alarm going ah, 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 over and over <laughs> incessantly. Alarms, yep, someone yeah. literally slept through it and almost died. I mean, it had to be oh. rescued with the, with, uh, from the seventh floor. I was on the sixth, had to be rescued from the seventh. With a uh, ladder, a fire engine ladder, that only went to the seventh floor. Oh. Barely got out in time. It was <laughs> it was astonishing and awful, and all of my stuff was destroyed. Anyway, several days later, days later, not hours, not whatever, days later, included in my room, as you guys know, I'm... Uh, been a music guy all along. At that time, it was all vinyl. We were talking the mm. 70s. I had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of records destroyed. Oh. Well, several days later, at the complete other end of campus, the very, very far end of campus, I don't know how far it is really. Maybe it's a uh, half mile. I don't know. It's a ways. It was the other end of campus. Uh, I was talking to someone days later. And floating down out of the air came one of my album covers <laughs> that was burnt exactly around Groucho Marx's face. <laughs> so all that all that remained was his a large cartoon version of his face. It was, you know, his album. Uh, it was like a greatest hits kind of thing. And it literally just fell out of the sky and landed between us as we were talking 
days later. So why did that survive? How did that survive? Where was it the subsequent time? How did it fall from the sky in the middle of our conversa- conversation? I do not have those I'd, answers. I have the answer. It was one more real severe oddity about the whole thing. Yes, tell me. Groucho Marx was your guardian angel. He may have been. <laughs> he was just trying to send you that message. <laughs> By the way, the, I had you there. Yes, I, I still have that. Because it was so perfectly burnt, literally outlining his face. It looked like it was had been done on purpose. And that survived. And basically, pff, nothing else did. It was it was a severe fire because of all the vinyl. Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. And the, I mean it's there are countless stories like that and there are stories coming out of this area like that where people think everything is lost and the, a man found his wedding ring there there's another story or his wife's wedding ring that she set there to do dishes and then there's another story from up here where uh she thought that she lost her horse you know her her you know was so sad because she couldn't get her horse out the horse found a nearby swimming pool and has been hanging out for the past two days but other than being cold is fine Oh, that's hanging out by the pool, while hanging everything... in the pool. Yeah, and I—I I mean, there's all the most people lost everything. I, I'm not downplaying that, but but just to know that you know, I, I think I—I I never thought I'd say these words, but um, with the fires down south, I think Alyssa Milano said it best. She said, "Everything with a heartbeat got out." Mm. So I'm grateful. Yeah, well, and that—that that is important. what matters. That's what matters. Yeah. So so for for people that have lost everything, I mean, the memories. Believe me. I hoard memories. I'm like that, you know. I have all these, you know, memorabilia and keepsakes, but that's not what matters in in this life. It's it's our relationships and those we love, and and don't don't give up hope if you haven't found someone. Um, it's but it it is truly devastating. Fire is truly devastating, and and to think that anyone sets it on purpose, you know, like in cases of arson, like we've been talking about, it just sure. Wow, you know, because it's so uncontrollable. It's yeah, so it's scary. once again, and I, I don't know if you've actually run through them. What are the six kinds, and w- what's the motivation? Yeah the uh, the six the six kinds are revenge, vandalism, crime concealment, insurance claim, excitement, and pyromaniac. And uh, it seems like revenge is the most common, but the most impulsive. You know, so it's the most prevalent category. But oftentimes, knock on wood except for the Julio Gonzalez case, a lot of the revenge cases are often not as destructive because they don't plan ahead, right? Sure. So sometimes people think that something will just go up, but yeah. it doesn't, yeah. thankfully. You know, there's yeah. lots of cases like that where they attempt to set a fire and it doesn't catch, thank goodness. And, you know, vandalism, that's usually young kids, and typically that does not result in loss of life, right? That's yeah. just kids that want to destroy something. Garages, yeah, garages are a lot of times. Uninhabited, the, yeah. uninhabited places, you know, like they set a building on fire because they want to see it burn, and a lot of that is curiosity. Or absurd. an outhouse. Yes. yes a exactly. porta potty. Right. Yes. A porta potty. Yeah, exactly. porta potties like, are always fun. Crime concealment and insurance claims. I mean, those are other types of criminals, right? That you're worried about the other stuff. Excitement is like that is to me that's very much like the pyromaniac. I don't mm-hmm. see there being a lot of difference other than that pyromaniac doesn't always have to have a reason. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's and always it, amazing to me. But Eric, go ahead, finish your thought. I was just well, going to say, and, and, and I think there's more of an implication with the pyromaniac that it's a serial kind of activity. Absolutely, where they almost almost like it's an irresistible impulse. You remember that hearing that idea? Yeah. Like, is this, irresistible impulse that they can't deny and a pyromaniac almost feels that way like it's this release for them and they cannot stop whereas the excitement one i don't think it matters either way i think uh, they can stop. i was gonna say serial killer and serial pyromaniac they yes. have a lot in common oh break yeah they do yes they do and they both you know the pyromaniac can result in death it is this building up of tension and then sometimes a sexual release same as serial killers when they set a fire it's very similar and scary, very, very scary. scary, very scary. You know, because I, I suppose where the uh, it's also a very intimate act too for the pyromaniac because they're usually targeting things that are homes, garages, cars, stuff like that. And they have an mo like a serial killer. So yeah. a serial killer often has a preferred method of operation how they like to do it. So do pyromaniacs. Like Thomas Sweat, 
he had his little milk jug thing that he perfected. You know, he spent time on wow. it. He perfected it to make it work exactly the way he wanted it to work. And, you know, and he did it in Washington, D.C. area, an urban area with lots of cops. You know, mm-hmm. he was good at what he did. Well, and it resulted yeah. in billions and millions of dollars worth of destruction and I think five or six deaths. I burned down a building one time. <gasps> oh, no. What I happened? did. I was probably about 12, 12 years old. And and oh. I uh, grew up in a rural area on a farm at that time. And. And inside this barn, and I was not, I don't know why I did this to this day. I just don't know. Or it was full of burlap sacks, this mm-hmm. this, this mm-hmm. barn, right? I was grabbing, you know, we used to use feed and stuff like that. So we keep all the burlap sacks. For some reason, my dad needed one. And I'm thinking, well, I got this cool Zippo lighter because I was a Boy Scout. I'm just going to light my way with this. And I tripped and it fell. <gasps> and whoosh. And burlap oh. sacks go up so fast just incredibly fast i i couldn't believe how fast this fire was spreading i wow. i could it was just so amazing so i was the only one in the general vicinity so i ran and got the i was close enough to a garden hose right and i'm i'm feverishly trying to put this thing out and it's not working all the greatest i mean it you know grabbing a garden hose put off fire is really cool. difficult it's, yeah. it, it doesn't quite have the flow you need like a fire hose, you know, does. But it did get under control. I did get under control, and, and I, I didn't tell anybody. I just kind of walked away like, do do do. wasn't me. wasn't me. <laughs> and then my dad, he goes, huh, why did the barn burn down? <laughs> what, what happened? I said, I don't know. He said, hmm, you know, I shouldn't have put all that burlap together. It's kind of like putting the hay together. I should have known better. I got away with it for years oh, up until now. I, I'm confessing a crime hey. right here, <laughs> right now from it when I was 12. It's good for your soul. And it was accidental. It and was. It, like, it was. No one was hurt. Like, no one was only, hurt. The only fire I was ever uh, like party to was, you know, the same roommate that folded her laundry on the draining table? Same sure, person, right? Sure. Different location. She put her French coffee maker, you know, those chrome sort of French coffee press things, fancy coffee. She put it on our our stove, right, to heat yeah. it up. Yeah. And then she went to take a shower for some reason while she left this French chrome coffee maker on the burner, you know, open flame oh, burner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're supposed to, I don't think that's how they're supposed to work. I don't know. I don't know. I was. Sound right to me. Either. Yeah, I was asleep. And she'd done it with an electric stove, okay, many times. But this was an open flame. Yeah, this was a gas, gas stove. Gas, yeah. We've never had that before. And so the, the um, handle on it, which was like bake light or plastic or something, huh. began, began to melt. Oh, God. And, yeah. And it melted into the fire, the open flame, and then just went. Like yeah. yeah it just went up and like and i was coming into the kitchen right as this happened i see it dripping off the end of the coffee maker mm. and then this, this boom it goes wow. up and it, i'm leaping like six seven feet into the air there's a painting behind the stove which has also gone up at this point and i grab the fire extinguisher <laughs> i put it out and i'm not gonna name her she comes out from her shower and she's just like why is all this powder all over everything? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. And I'm like, don't wow. talk to me. Wow. This was before. <laughs> Man, I did also start a microwave fire, microwaving candy corn, but that's a whole nother show. Why were you microwaving? I was a stupid corn? kid because I, oh, I, I, heard, oh. I heard it becomes a really good syrup if you microwave it, and it doesn't. It, it, <laughs> it becomes a really good fire. <laughs> yes. You know. Just it becomes a better candy. You know what the coolest thing you can microwave with a microwave CDs. is? CDs. A microwave. <laughs> oh, what? throw a CD in one of those ones. Um, put a microwave in a microwave. Well, no, it, they're hard so to how's fit. That for, how's that for meta? <laughs> that is. <laughs> that is. What happens if you put a CD in there? Oh, seriously? you get like this. You get all sorts of fireworks in there, and then you know. Yeah, no, the, don't do that, people. It's the no. best way to destroy a CD is to put in the microwave. That thing will never get red. That's, uh, that's way it. to destroy a microwave is it, yeah, is put a CD in it. 
it is to yeah don't people do not set your house on fire do, 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 don't do that don't take my advice really quickly dr cole can you run through those numbers again for people that are looking for loved ones that may not be accounted for Yes. If you have loved ones in the campfire, the northern part of the state in California, uh, you can go to the Butte County Sheriff's website, which is uh, Butte is B-U-T-T-E county dot net slash sheriff coroner. And they have a easily accessible list of missing persons. If you need to add someone to the list or you need to take someone off the list, please call 530-538-6570. And, uh, oh, the other thing, if someone needs a place to stay out here, Airbnb in California has over 450 residences for people that are refugees of the fires listed for free. Go to Airbnb if someone needs a place to stay. Thanks again for all the information. And everyone, pray for rain for California. They're super dry. Enough rain to get this under control. Not a deluge, but just enough to get this under control. We don't want to cause mudslides on top of having this horrible fire. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Until next time, guys, to tomorrow night uh, when we talk with Eric. Alan Roberts. That's our, one of our favorite punk rockers, Alan Roberts. My Life and Misery guitarist will be joining us tomorrow night. Until next time, take care of each other, love each other, and again, pray for rain. Thank you for listening to this edition of After Hours AM, and please remember to like us on Facebook and also follow us over on Twitter.